Hi, Tracy Lewis from Stuff and Things. Today, as part of my regathering of supplies, my mom and I are going to make perler bead dots. She's getting low on them, and of course I have none. So we bought this package of the Brights, and I have the neutrals coming. You can buy these at any big box store. We ended up going to Hobby Lobby because they were only $9.99 there, and I used a 40% off coupon. So, Joanne's had them for $12.99, and Michael's didn't seem to have this exact kind, so we didn't even try going there. And we skipped Joanne because of the price. We have my mom's oven set to $3.25. We have three trays filled with, this is actually t-shirt heat press material, which is the exact same thing as your craft mats that you get, only I get them. As a tip for you guys, I buy heat press transfer sheets. These are silicone sheets or Teflon sheets. And they run me $6.88 for three, I think they're like 18 by 24s. And if you buy them, like we saw this one sheet at Hobby Lobby for $17.99 for one of these smaller cut sizes. So be sure to go on Amazon and look up t-shirt heat press protection and that is the same material as the craft mats. So I'm going to walk over here. We've kind of got everything just about ready. We're going to try two trays at a time. We've got the oven set to 325. My mom wants to protect her counters so we've got towels everywhere to set stuff out. It'll take between 15 and 25 minutes per uh, tray to finish up and we might have to lower the temp. I think I played with my temp in my old convection oven and I had convection on and I found that 325 was a little bit hot. So we, my mom actually cut a lot of these. She started at the end here with the pinks and the reds and has cut a lot of these in half. The smallest size dot is a half of a perler bead. The middle size is one perler bead and then the largest size is you, you stack two, preferably in a T, and I'm gonna experiment with that. So I'll come back and video what it looks like with the trays. And then I did an article of this last year, no, not last year, 2015 I did it. And so that uh, I will probably re-hook up into that article that has a lot of the detail of that experience so that uh, this current experience mixed with that will give us a lot of material for you guys to try this out. So stay tuned, I'll be back. All right, so I am back. We've got my mom's oven going. It's gonna kill our backs. I am I did this with my oven, which was at eye level, and her slide-in silver shelving things don't have gliders like mine did, which means the very first thing when I closed the door, the double tall ones all fell over. So I had to stand here in the heat, making them tall. Now. The next issue is we're doing two rows and see the bottom row? I can't even see it to know if they're all done or not because it's too dark. The light, is, there's no light underneath. So we might actually be stuck staying with just one row at a time, one tray at a time because I don't think I'm going to be able to see that bottom tray very well. So that's what we're looking at. We got a good 15 minutes. We did put it on 300 convect. So we'll see how that goes and we'll be back. All right, so while the first set are still going, and they're looking really good in there, we're just waiting for the centers to fill in on everything. We are cutting. I'm using my Stampin' Up! snips that are really sharp. They're pretty new. It works way better with something sharp. And then my mom found, she doesn't have good scissors, so she found these, these wire cutters, and they seem, the only thing they do is squish the roundness a little bit into a little bit flatter shape. You can see some ovals in there. My snips aren't doing that. So any kind of a wire cutter or a pair of sharp snips work quite well. Okay, so here we go. These are fresh dots just removed. Look, there's a hot pink one, that's funny. They look all good to me. There are no pinholes here and then I'm gonna pull Hopefully not make a big mess. The upper one, so the lower one looks really good. I do see a few pinholes in this upper one. 
but not bad. That looks pretty darn good for all the hot pinks. We're doing Valentine colors first, I guess. So that looks good, and then there's one that I'm going to put in right now. And I'm going to put in on the bottom because I'm liking how it looked like the bottom ones were done first. Hey, before I conclude the video of doing the dots, I wanted to analyze some dots close up. And I've got some dots laid out. The ones on the left is the variety of sizes you get from the half cut purlers. And the ones on the right are what the size differences are that you get from one full purler. The one closest to me right here has a pinhole. And there's a, there's a pinhole on the second one back and the fourth one back. So those are what you need to leave them in the oven until all those pinholes go away. And it can take a while depending on the material. We found that these hot pink ones took longer. The orange ones cooked quite fast, and then the yellow ones took a long time. So you just don't want to be, you know, this was like my mom being anxious to pull them out. So we pulled them out, and I saw a few of the pinholes, and I should have gone ahead and put this, this tray back in. But, you know, they these aren't perfectly round. They are definitely not exactly like the dots that you buy, which are perfectly round, and they're they're all domed the same. These have a little bit more of that homemade look to them, which I am totally fine with. And the middle ones, or the ones on the right here, is the middle size. So you can just double that size for the two tall ones that we ended up not having any success with because my mom's oven just was not helpful for us trying to get the trays set in without having them all fall over. And it was just too much work for me to sit in the heat and try to reset them all back up. So this is what they look like. These happen to be the hot pink ones, and it's a good subset showing some pinholes and some not. All right, so we're just about done for the day. I'm showing you here what we did. This is my mom's set of colors, and here's how full her container is. Over here, we finished all of the reds and most of the oranges, it looks like. She's working on, um, we're trying to get some more colors done. So this is a, we're doing like three colors per tray now. When we started doing full trays of color, and when I did this a few years ago, I actually did one row of each color because I definitely wanted to actually have a full set of colors sooner than later. Here's the some container options for you guys. So we bought these at the dollar store, the Monday through Sundays, or Sunday through through, through Saturday, I guess. And then I found up in storage an unopened package of what I call Tic Tac boxes. And they literally are Tic Tac boxes. Um, if I can pull one out here so I can show you, that would be great. So these little boxes, this is my red compared to her red. Um, mine is packed tight, so I think she ended up with a few more than I did, but I'm totally fine with that. And the tic-tac boxes open like a tic-tac, and you can pour them out and look at them and decide which ones you want to use. We also decided not to do um, the double-up ones. We stuck with the small ones and then the full, si full single perler bead size. Now, this is a jewelry container, so this is actually six, and you can actually stack them taller than six. If you buy, like, two sets of these, you can stack them as tall as you want to, depending on what your storage space is. And the other option for these, there are these um, other jewelry finding containers that I've had. This is 24. I can tell you we're going to do the neutrals, which is going to have the, the white, brown, and black here in the middle. So those are dupes. So we're going to need 29 colors, so 29 holes. And I have 24 containers with the Tic Tacs plus the seven days here with the Monday through, or Sunday through Saturday. So I'll probably end up with these two containers unless I can find one that actually has the, the total of 32, which would be desired. Then my mom is going to do mixed colors in this, I think, eventually. And she has a small Sunday through Saturday right now that has mixed colors. And that is it. And we are doing our last couple of trays right now, for, and that's going to be it for the day. So I think we finished... One, two, three, four, five 
and she's actually going to work on that tray of the greens and blues after I leave. I do want to show this one. Now, for some reason, this in this tray, the purple here actually has sparkles in it, and we don't know why, because none of the others have sparkles, and I've actually never seen the perler beads with sparkles, so it'll be interesting to see how those turn out when we do them. So that concludes our cooking for the day. Thanks for watching.